Sigma has stepped in with what looks like the first native 200mm f2 made specifically for full frame mirrorless. Fast aperture 200mm primes, f2 or even f1.8 have always been part of a very small, very elite group. Nikon had one, Canon had two, all built in DSLR era, big, heavy and expensive. Fujifilm made a mirrorless version 2, but that was APS-C, not full frame. But full frame mirrorless? There has been nothing. Until now. And if you remember that big mystery lens sitting in the background of my last video, yep, this is it. And I have been shooting with it for a while. Now it's finally time to talk about it. Available for Sony E mount and L mount. External controls include focus limiter, OS, AF, MF, custom switches, and a trio of AFL buttons. Aperture ring with click and lock functions. Minimum focus distance 1.7 meters. Thorough weather sealing. Water and oil repellent front element. Rounded 11 blade diaphragm. Arca Swiss compatible tripod collar. Includes a hood that is fastened via tension knob. Sports line performance and durability. Yeah, it's part of Sigma Sports line, but don't let that label fool you. With its insane compression and beautifully blurred backgrounds, this thing works just as well for portraits or fashion as it does on the sidelines. It's not exactly ideal weather here, hot, humid, and there's no sports or fashion action going on. But honestly, I don't think this lens cares. Let's roll. Whether it's center or the extreme corners, this lens has no trouble out resolving the 33 megapixel sensor, delivering crisp, detailed results with impressive contrast across the entire frame right from f2. The only thing that truly limits its resolving power is diffraction, which starts to kick in beyond f11. There's a very mild amount of pincushion distortion visible if you look closely. But it's minimal enough that I would still consider this lens virtually distortion free for most practical use. Vignetting is also present at f2, particularly towards the extreme corners. It gradually improves as you stop down, and by 5.6, it's largely gone. When you point the lens directly at a strong light source, like the sun or a bright street lamp, you might catch a small amount of flare, but it's well controlled. There's no significant loss of contrast, no harsh veiling, and nothing that's going to ruin your shot. At f2, there's a minor presence of longitudinal chromatic aberration, visible as slight magenta fringing in front of the focal plane and green behind it. However, the effect is minimal and only noticeable at close distances. Stopping down to f2.8 effectively eliminates it. Lateral chromatic aberration on the other hand is completely absent. That level of correction is commendable, especially for a fast telephoto prime. Bokeh is unquestionably one of this lens defining strengths. 
thanks to its fast f2 aperture and long focal length it delivers massive background separation with strong subject compression creating a pronounced three dimensional pop there's no visible nervousness or distracting artifacts in the bokeh orbs you will notice some cat's eye effect towards the edges of the frame but it's well controlled and doesn't detract from the overall rendering quality and thanks to the rounded 11 blade diaphragm those bokeh circles stay consistently round even when stopping down this isn't a vlogging lens and it's certainly not built for close up work with a minimum focus distance of 1.7 meters it's better suited for subjects at a distance that said image quality wide open is still very good and it hits peak sharpness around f5.6 autofocus is powered by sigma's high response linear actuator motor the same proven system they introduced last year but here it feels like it's operating on another level focus lock is near instantaneous in fact i haven't experienced this level of autofocus performance in any of third party lenses so far it even holds focus when the subject moves partially out of the frame there's some next level tech going on here focus breathing on this lens is significant we are talking major field of view shift as you rack focus if you're planning to use this for video work especially where focus transitions are involved it's definitely something to be aware of this lens is equipped with sigma's optical stabilization system referred to as os the os system offers two modes mode one stabilizes both horizontal and vertical axes ideal for general handheld use while mode 2 stabilizes only the vertical axis allowing smoother more natural panning here is a side by side comparison first with os disabled and now with it enabled sigma stabilization does an excellent job minimizing shake to put it in perspective here is a direct comparison with sony's 200 to 600 mm at 200 mm focal length surprisingly the sigma holds steadier with noticeably less jitter The stabilization performance also translates well into handheld video. The footage remains impressively stable and more than usable even at this focal length. The resolving power of this lens is outstanding. I wouldn't be surprised if it held up with teleconverters. Unfortunately, Sony doesn't support those on third-party lenses. and you are also limited to 50 fps with autofocus maybe other mounts won't have that issue that said i kept forgetting this was third party the size and weight are surprisingly manageable it's well balanced easy to handheld for short bursts and the new white finish and updated sigma branding it just feels native